This is your one and only FireSpark81 with your daily dose of video goodness and welcome to the Dyson Sphere program. Today we're going to take a look at some tips for beginners. Let's get to it. First up we have interacting with belts. So if you highlight over a belt you can see you can highlight over specific chunks and then you select it it brings up the that actual chunk of the belt. If something rotates through there it will show up here and you can pick it up. So you can also put stuff in the belt very easily by clicking on it and grabbing it and then just holding down the button in that little slot there. You can see that we're, we're filling the belt there. If I wanna pick things up off of the belt, let's go down here to the end of the belt. I can do the same thing, just select a chunk and if we bring up my inventory here, you can see it's now filling up in my inventory. So we're just clicking the left mouse button and then it just puts it in my inventory and I can easily fill the belt up at that spot. So if you want to load a belt full of something, you will go towards the end of the belt because you only fill that at that spot and then it moves forward and you can't fill backwards. So I can select right here, bring up my inventory, grab the item, and then just load the belt up that way. And that leads us into our next tip, which is tanks. Tanks are super handy. Make sure you use them for storing any type of liquid. You can see here, it holds 10,000 of that liquid and they stack so you can stack them on top of each other to hold 20,000 because they share an inventory. But there's an issue with that and that is that you can't interact with the tanks. So if you, you see here, it shows us what's in there, but I can't pick up anything out of the tank. If I hit E to bring up my inventory, it closes that. And if I click on it again, it closes that. So if you want to pull something out of your tank, how do you do it? Well, you can use belts to do that. So we will just connect a belt to the tank like that and then draw it out a little bit and then let the bots build it. And now the stuff in the tank is coming out on the belt. Now, all we have to do is take what I told you in the last tip and click on the end of the belt there to select it. And then I can grab things out of the tank. And you can see, as long as I hold down the button, it will just continue to empty out of the tank. Now, if I wanna put that stuff back into the tank, all I have to do is the same thing. Just go on the other side of the tank to the belt that I have leading into it, and I can put all of my stuff back into the tank super easy. The next tip I have for you is all about easy, efficient power using the solar panels. So solar panels are super easy cheap and you get them relatively early game. They're super easy to make. They mainly just take a lot of iron and copper. So you have the four circuit boards, which take iron and copper, then it needs some additional copper plates. And then you have the high purity silicone, which you can easily mine from stone. So you can mine the silicone ore from the stone, and then you can just form that into the high purity stuff. So they're super easy and super cheap to make. You can all automate them really early game and they're really decent power. The issue is if you place them on your base anywhere around on the side of the planet, the planet rotates and it doesn't always have the sun, so you're not always going to have continuous power. Well, there's a slight flaw in this game due to the fact that we are on a planet and because of that, the maps are spheres and we can use that to our advantage. So if you hit M to zoom out on your map to go to your worldview, you can see we have the South Pole there and then over here, the red one is the North Pole. And you can see I have a bunch of solar panels in a giant circle on the tops and bottom poles. And that is because if we go all the way out to the space view and the reason you need to do both the top and the bottom is because if you take a look here, you, you can see a over here that it shows you that your planet is on an axis. All planets are on an axis. Well, at any given point of time, one of those axes, and you can see right now it is our North Pole. You can also click this up here to orient your planet. If we take a look here, you can see the shadow comes right across here. So our North Pole is in currently in perpetual daylight. Now our South Pole is not, but it, a chunk of that, depending on how big we make our circumference of our solar panels down here, is going to get a decent chunk of light, even though that it is, well, a chunk of the planet is in shadow. 
But eventually what will happen is the planet will shift on its axis and it will be a situation where our south pole is getting all of the light or majority of the light and our north pole is in shadows. That's why you want to put it on the top and the bottom of your planet, which is once again, super easy to do because they're very cheap. If we go over here and we take a look at these, you can see right now these have a ton of light on them. And if we go up here and we look at these where we're at, you can see that they're they're shaded a little bit. So let's go let's go in here and you can take a look. So we're at 60% efficiency there. Even on the ones that are in the shadows, they're still at 30% efficiency. If we head up here to our opposing pole and we take a look at these, you can see we're at 95% efficiency there, 98% efficiency, and 98% efficiency. So if you want to get easy infinite power early game just cover your top and bottom poles with solar panels as you can see that i've done here and it's really easy they you, to follow the grid and just map them out in a circle like so and then all you do is you take your wireless power towers and you use those for long range power transmission you can see they can go pretty far even if you don't want to do that you can still run the cheaper tesla towers along the way to your base next up we have early titanium ore so you may need a little bit of titanium ore to kind of kickstart your progress and kickstart your research through the tree if you don't have titanium ore on your starter planet it is possible to find it in these little rocks here you can see there's 22 there so you just walk up and mine these little rocks and you can get some titanium ore on your planet to get you started. Now, those are rather scattered on your planet, a little few and far between, so you kinda gotta hunt them down, and they're not very efficient. Your best bet is to quickly research the ability to fly off of your planet, which you just need the drive engine here, which is super easy to get a hold of. It's just some blue and red research. Once you get a hold of that, you can easily fly off of your planet and go into sail mode and go to another planet that will actually have the ore and then what you want to do there before you do that is empty your inventory of pretty much everything that you have except for a little additional fuel and a few miners as well as maybe some solar panels or some thermal power stations and a little bit of fuel for those go to a planet that has titanium mine a bunch of it and then bring Bring it back to your base that should get you jump started really easy and give you the ability to research what you need to do the interplanetary transfers what you can see um is that it that's not it this is it so this bad boy right here is your interstellar logistics station and it only takes two of them to start transferring ore from one planet to another quickly and easily and one inventory is full of titanium ore should be enough to get you the research and craft up two of these so you can put one on each planet and start transferring that ore back and forth. The next tip is about the fractionator. This is one that I actually had to have my chat help me with on stream because I didn't understand how it worked at first either. So big shout out to everybody who joined me on the stream and all those who helped me figure this one out. So this thing is kind of weird. You have to cycle through its inventory. As you see here, I actually have it set up in a loop. So the hydrogen is going through here, comes out here, comes back around, goes back into this tank. And then if I need be, I can hook up this belt here like so, and then start rotating it through the tank and back through this thing but i currently have enough output that i don't need to do that but if you allow stuff to build up in its inventory so if i come over here and i stop it and it eventually builds up in the inventory you can see here it is built up in the inventory it is no longer working and you get the error for product stacking it's currently not doing anything right now you can't have the product build up in the inventory like that you have to vent it out the other side so if we select that and hook that up now you can see we're bouncing back and forth between it working and not working but eventually it'll go into working once it ticks down to just a couple in there at a time. So now you can see we're working and as it passes through there, there's a 1% chance that I'm going to get a deuterium. 
Now, you don't have to have it set up exactly like I have this one here. This is just kind of, uh, I just threw it in there type situation to see how they work. Honestly, your best bet would be to set up a row of these and pass the hydrogen from one inventory to another. So for example, we have this one here. I would set down another one next to it, another one next to that, another one next to that, and pass the output to the input, output to the input, output to the input, and then connect that back around into the circle. That is going to get you your best output of deuterium because you're going to be passing the ones that aren't used as you see here they pass through they don't get used to the next one and so on and so on so this next tip is about more free power or free fuel well free ish if we take a look at the oil node here you can see that it's producing one crude oil seep every 1.39 seconds well they're all different all of those crude nodes are different they don't produce at the same rate so you can see this one here 1.36 seconds this one here 144 this one here uh 135 as far as i know these are infinite and they never run out so if you have a setup where you're using the thermal power stations for your power your best bet for these is to set up multiple oil refineries one making the refined oil oil and a hydrogen from the crude and then you pass that through another oil refinery using the x-ray cracking once you have it unlocked and if we take a look here at the recipe that takes two hydrogen and one oil and out outputs three hydrogen and one of the energetic graphite which is also fuel. So you can use the hydrogen for fuel. You're essentially making an additional hydrogen for free because you're putting in two and you're getting out three and you're getting one of the energetic graphite. If you take a look at the energetic graphite, it actually produces 6.3 millijoules of power as opposed to the refined oil which only produces 4.4 millijoules it also has a higher fuel chamber gen efficiency at 60 percent as opposed to the refined oil which is 30 percent you can also use the hydrogen that you're outputting which produces eight megajoules millijoules whatever that is mj and has a fuel chamber efficiency of a hundred percent so an ideal setup would be to pass the crude through one stage of oil refineries and then pass it through a second stage of oil refineries and then you can burn the combination of the hydrogen and the energetic graphite or use the energetic graphite for something else because you get an infinite supply of it unlike if you're mining the coal nodes and turning it into this you, you're going to have a limited supply um, and then you can burn the hydrogen because if we take a look at our coal nodes you can see while i do have a lot here it is a finite supply this next tip is uh is going to be a quick one and that is just stack your matrix labs so you stack them for research and also stack them for crafting now what's interesting is that if you look here they actually have two separate inventories but one input output will share to both of those inventories same thing here when we're doing the crafting you can see we have two different sets of inventories here if I select the bottom or the top, but they share the same input output. So it's super effective to stack them so you can get more output in a smaller area and stacking them has more so you can do more research to cut your time for researching down drastically. Next up, we're gonna talk about belts and splitters. So the splitters are super handy because you have four directions that you can output and these are actually super configurable so we can set a priority if we click it you can see now that is going to be the priority output we can also set a filter for that if we want we can set a priority input as well you can see now that that's highlighted and that is going to be our priority input if I click the other one it darkens this one and this is our new one if I click over here it swaps the filter and everything to the other side we can just right click to get rid of all of that so I can just right click everything away or I can left click and set it back now you don't have to set a filter we can just left click on one of these and now that's priority it doesn't necessarily have to have a filter to have priority you can configure your splitters in different ways so if you hit tab over there you can see it says hit tab to switch pattern so you can hit tab to switch your pattern you have 
that one, that one, and the default four way. And all these act the same with their filters. All I have to do is just run some belts into them. And if we go up one, we can run a belt into the top part here and run it out like so. And if we click it, you can see here, we can do the same thing. So with this setup here, we have the bottom being our input and the top being our output. Now, if I just delete this belt here and place a new one going in the opposite direction, we now have a bottom input, a top output, and a bottom output. Now, you don't have to use the splitters if you wanna merge. You can merge stuff without a splitter but it's gonna be more effective with the splitter. So if I just run this belt in like this, you can see that it will now merge into here. And we can do the same thing in the other direction like so, and then it will merge them all into one. So you can do this as many times as you want. Like we can go over here and then just merge into this one if we want. So let's drag this out a little further and then we can merge into this one here. So there you go. But obviously it's going to be more efficient if you use a splitter as your merger, because it's going to auto balance for you. So it's time to upgrade your belts to the next tier belts. Well, unfortunately in this game, you can't just overlay over top of the belt and auto upgrade. I'm sure that will come at some point, but it's not a feature right now. And you already have a bunch of sorters connected to them. Well, you don't have to delete your sorters. You don't have to delete everything. You can just delete the belts. Just make sure when you start deleting, you are highlighted on the belt and then just drag along the belt. And as you see there, we only delete the belt. And then I can go through and then replace that belt right where the other one was and nothing will change. The sorters will continue to work as they were working before. So early on, it's actually relatively easy to unlock the Dyson Swarm. So if you're not familiar with what that is, if we go out here to the Dyson Sphere view, you can see that I have a bunch of little solar sails just hovering around the sun and I'm launching a bunch of them into the orbit as we speak right now. Uh, we got about seven more there and nine more there and they're launching into orbit. Don't rush this technology. Well, I mean, you can rush researching it, but don't try to get them placed and start using it as soon as you can. It's relatively inefficient to start with. So if you take a look here, we're continuously receiving this builds up as it goes on. And these work like solar panels. You only, this only happens when it is in direct view of the sun. And if you take a look here, we're requesting power and this is our maximum power. But the downside is if we go to our inventory and we highlight over these, these only last 1,800 seconds. Now you can extend these by coming over here to your research, going to right here, the solar sail life. So your first tier research, you can add 150 seconds and you can add another 150 seconds and you can add 300 seconds, another 300 seconds. And you can see, and it gets more and more expensive as you go on as far as research cost. So not only do they not last indefinitely, and this has to be in view of the sun and works as a solar panel anyway, you're better off just using straight solar panels. Now you're not gonna get quite the output that you're gonna get if you have a bunch of those going around. And if you place one of these receivers in an area, well, this is the wrong pole. Let me go to the other pole. Okay, here we go. This is the pole that's in perpetual daylight right now. So you would want to place these receivers like I told you to place your solar panels. So you'd want a couple at the top and a couple at the bottom so that you're always in view of the sun. You're still only going to produce so much power and you still have to keep creating and manufacturing these things and continuously launching them into orbit. So they're taking up resources. So you're creating solar power that's taking up resources continuously and power needed to launch them when you could just make giant rings of solar panels at your poles and get a buttload of power that way. Now, eventually down the research tree, you will unlock photon generation and all of this becomes much more efficient in the long run, but early game, it's just not very efficient to start to set up and start creating uh, when you can just make a bunch of solar panels a lot cheaper. They never degrade and you can put them at each of your poles 
and just generate infinite power that way. And if you take a look, this is now a perfect example. This is in darkness, so it's not receiving. It has zero signal strength, and we're not getting any power from it at all. The other thing is, is once this does start to get sunlight, this has to build up over time. So you definitely, if you do decide to try to set this up and use this, you do not want to put these in an area where it's going to be dark. You definitely want to split them between your poles. So this last tip I have for you comes in the form of the logistics stations. So we're looking at a planetary logistics station right here. This is your interstellar logistics station. They operate pretty much the same way, except for this one it just transfers stuff around your planet without having to have belts. This one transfers between planets. It can also do locally as well. You can see here I have it supplying uh, these titanium crystals locally. So once you click on it, you can set your different options. So if we just click here, we'll just click iron ore. Then you can click to adjust how much you want its inventory to hold. So we can just drag this down to a thousand. Right now it's set to supply. If I click it, I can set it to demand or I can set it to just act as storage. And in that case, it will ignore this altogether. You can also set how quickly you want it to charge. So right now it's set to charge it only using 12 megawatts of power. I can drag this up all the way to 60. So once you've done this and you have it supplying or demanding, then you want to drag a belt into it so that you can input into its inventory. So if we do that, then we were to place the iron ore or feed iron ore into it. It's going to start to build up in here up to 1,100 and then it will supply it around. Now, how do you get stuff out of it? Because if we were to just drag out and let's actually let's select something here that we can actually do so let's just clear this list click to clear it and we will just pick the copper plates and we're just going to drag that down to 400 and then we will drop some copper plates into it so we can just feed those into it like so but as you see now we have the belt coming out but there's nothing coming out. Now, if I wanna get those out on our output belt here, if I highlight over it, you can see it has a little filter option. So we just select that filter and click it. And then now we are getting our copper. So we can do that for whatever we feed into there, we can get out using those little filters. So if I do another belt out and uh, let's just feed something else random in here. So let's just feed these in there. And now you can see it's not going in there because it doesn't want those because we don't have a storage spot for those. So I have to come over here, click it, tell it that that's storage, and then they go in. Now, if I highlight over this one, you can see another little thing shows up there, a little filter symbol, and then I can select these. And now those are our output. So to get things out, you have to select those little filters and select what you want coming out of those individual output nodes. Okay, well, hopefully you all found this video helpful. If you did, consider hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can be notified when I upload other videos. And I don't just cover Dyson Sphere program. I cover all kinds of different games. So you never know when I'm going to be covering a game you may be playing. All right, that is going to wrap it up for this episode. If you like what you saw, consider hitting that sub button. I want to give a big thank you to my patrons for making this episode possible. Y'all are absolutely amazing people. If you would like to join my Elite Crew Patreon supporters, please check out the link in the description below below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment, just hit that thumbs up button and share your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.